Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Olivia Flavius from Media Tech Home. Happy Labor Day weekend. In today's video, I am so excited to share with you guys 10 DIY Dolly Tree and budget friendly decor crafts. So this is another episode in my huge I Love Fall series. I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. I truly believe that you don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. Now listen, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribing is totally free. Click the bell and punch all. That will update you every single time I post a new video. Also follow me over my Libby's Romantic Home Facebook page. I share several DIY videos a day with you guys over there. Now listen, without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns. Get out your glitter and paint and let's get to crafting. DIY. We're gonna make a deco mesh pumpkin fall decor craft and we are going to use a cooling rack from Dollar Tree. I'm also gonna use about 10 to 15 pipe cleaners and I just cut those in half and I'm going to take the pipe cleaner and begin at the corner of the cooling rack. Now I'm sharing with this because I did share with you guys a splatter screen pumpkin and apparently Dollar Tree is sold out of splatter screens everywhere so I really wanted to give you guys an alternative in case you cannot find that splatter screen or the pumpkin wreath form. You can make a pumpkin with a cooling rack. Now it's going to be a little bit more of a squared off pumpkin but that's okay pumpkins aren't perfect and they can really be any kind of cute little shape that we want them right guys so I'm just gonna take the deco mesh and I'm gonna um, just pipe cleaner it on to the end of the cooling rack and this is just the Dollar Tree deco mesh it's about six inches I believe and you're just going to twist tie your little deco mesh on you could also use zip ties and I like to double it up so as you guys can tell I'm taking I'm pulling the deco mesh down I'm tying it on and then I'm pulling it over twice that way it gets really nice good coverage because you really don't want to see the cooling rack in between um, the little rungs there so I hope that makes a sense but you guys once you get to this step and it's pretty securely on the ends you can kind of not use the pipe cleaner on every single rung so once I got as you guys can see towards the center part I just wrapped it and wrapped it and wrapped it and I did use five rolls of deco mesh for this project and it was Dollar Tree deco mesh now if you had the thicker deco mesh like from the craft store I don't think you guys would have to use five rolls maybe two rolls of like the 21 inch um, you also could use a floral wire if you don't have pipe clearers. so just have fun with it get creative and basically what I'm doing is I'm just covering this whole cooling rack with deco mesh now I did go with an extra piece around the corner to try to give it a little bit more of a rounded shape so I took that extra piece and I went around the corner pipe cleanered it on and then went back around the corner again to try to give it a little bit more shape and so it doesn't look quite so squared off on the edge. I hope that makes sense. And I compared it to the one that we already did and I feel like it was pretty close. So anyway, I'm just adding some more pipe cleaners on and then continuing on with the exact same process. Just pipe cleanering the mesh to the cooling rack, wrapping it around several times and then adding another pipe cleaner. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna make a super adorable Dollar Tree bow. So I'm using my Easy Bow Maker and I'm just popping a piece of pipe cleaner down first. And then I'm taking this really cute little candy corn boo ribbon and I'm gonna measure my bow six inches across. And don't worry, again, if you don't have a bow maker, I'll leave a big bow video down below for you guys in the description box linked. It's a Christmas bow video, but it shares all my Easy Bow that you can make without a tool. So I'm also gonna dovetail the ends of my ribbon. You're just going to cut a triangle upward and that's gonna give you a really boutique, pretty little ribbon. Now this bow maker is amazing. It's definitely my favorite, it's so easy. It saves my fingers 
um, from pitching and twisting and all of that good stuff. So the next ribbon I'm going to add is this cute little happy Halloween. I'm staggering my colors with the black ribbon and then the orange ribbon. And so think about that when you put your bows together is to try to stagger your colors. And also because the pumpkin is orange, I wanted to put a black ribbon on the base. So hopefully that will pop out. And again, I'm just going six inches on either side. I also decided to add in this really cute little witch hat ribbon from Dollar Tree. Again, all of this ribbon is from Dollar Tree. I think I do throw one ribbon in that's not from Dollar Tree, but gosh, you guys, Dollar Tree has some super adorable little Halloween ribbon. So definitely keep your eye out for it. My stores are just putting it out now. And I do have to drive to several different stores to try to find all the goodies that I need for all of my crafts for you guys. Oh, here's that extra ribbon that wasn't from Dollar Tree. Now this is the Mackenzie Child's ribbon that I got at the barn sale. Um, it's really pretty with the chest but you guys could also just use some buffalo check plaid ribbon which Dollar Tree put out. Again, dovetail those ends and keep adding your fun bows. You guys know me, I love to go over the top with bows. <laughs> so we're going to make a cute little big bow here and then I decided to add some more of that cute little black ribbon to the very last rung of it. Once I have my bow all ready to go, I just took a pipe cleaner and added a pipe cleaner and twist tied it together and then left the ends of the pipe cleaner sticking out on the back because I want to be able to attach that to my pumpkin. I also thought it would be super adorable to make this kind of more of a fall Halloween pumpkin. And since I already did the just strictly fall pumpkin, so I'm adding these cute little witch legs. These also came from Dollar Tree and I just tied them on with the original ribbon after I popped the other two parts of the sign off. Now I'm taking some of this pretty Dollar Tree sparkling smaller ribbon. This comes in the Halloween section is where I found mine. And I'm just gonna make a cute little loopy bow here super easy you just take the bow loop it over on itself and then make another loop and then the next thing I wanted to add was some of that um, Dollar Tree mesh tubing if you guys always wonder what to do with that I found that it's really fun to kind of add on either side of my bows it just gives it kind of some dimension so I'm just taking it and kind of just making loops and you guys can tell I kind of got everything a little bit all tangled up but sometimes I get so excited when I'm crafting I don't realize the mess that I'm making comment and let me know if you guys are huge mess makers one day I'm gonna have to share with you guys my floor underneath what it looks like after I craft you would probably just be appalled it is such a disaster I make the hugest mess so anyway I'm just taking a pipe cleaner and I'm pipe cleanering the little kind of loops on of course this part is optional but again I just wanted to give it a little bit of kind of fun dimension and let me know what you guys are thinking is it looking like a pumpkin yet now I did decide to add a little finishing touch to the top this was the other part of that sign that I got from Dollar Tree that I took apart I just added a dab of hot glue popped it into the top and I thought that was a cute little thing and then I'm taking some of this purple it's just little fairy lights that come in mesh tubing and I'm to add them to the back. And here is the finished project. Oh my goodness, I am so in love with this. I am so excited to go ahead and also be doing some of these fun Halloween crafts. I usually focus so much on fall, I forget to make some of my really pretty Halloween crafts and I come up a little bit empty handed once it transitions from fall to Halloween because I do go over the top and decorate for both holidays. And check this out. What do you guys think? I think this looks pretty pretty good. I mean, the pumpkin shape is a little bit squared off, but if you guys can't find those splatter screens, who knew Dollar Tree was going to sell out of splatter screens? We're going to have to keep a mental note in the springtime when they finally get them back in stock to gather those up for our fall crafts. But anyway, you guys comment and let me know what you guys think about this cute little pumpkin. So fun and fabulous. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys a really simple DIY. I'm just going to take this Dollar Tree carvable pumpkin and I'm going to remove the top. And then I poked a little bit more of a hole in it. And then I found this really cute little leopard cheetah print scarf at Dollar Tree. Oh my goodness. I was so excited to 
find this, you guys. And I'm just adding a dab of hot glue and then popping the scarf into the top of this. Now think about this. You guys can customize this DIY and use any fabric that you have at home. So maybe you have burlap or lace or a pretty shabby chic fabric or any fabric that you have. I really thought it was really cute that Hobby Lobby put out some little leopard pumpkins, but I didn't really want to splurge on them because I really wasn't for sure if I would like them and with my decor. And it's just a little while even for me, but I think it's so cute. I ended up loving it and made do a couple more but I'm just taking the scarf and wrapping it around and poking it into the hole and then I hot glued at the very end and then I'm just adding a cute little um, Dollar Tree wooden piece stem you could also go out to your yard and add a stick from your yard that would work or you could paint the little top to the Dollar Tree pumpkin stem and put it back on there I did want to make it look a little bit more high-end and I thought this would be really cute and so the styrofoam one and then I'm just adding the hot uh, hot gluing some cute little leaves to the top and this to me looks just as good as the Hobby Lobby leopard ones. It's all shiny and fabulous and it really looks cute popped into my fall decor. Now here it is popped into the little space beneath my mantle. You guys have seen that. I did a huge floral. How adorable is this? I also tried popping it into my little basket of pumpkins and I thought it looked really, really cute. Okay, so comment let me know. Are you guys going to take a walk on the wild side and add some leopard to your fall and Halloween decor. I was really surprised by how cute I thought it looked and just how fun and whimsical it came out. So as always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be trying to recreate. I also have a fun new giveaway to announce. I'm going to be giving away a $50 gift card to burlapfabric.com. They have a bunch of really fun goodies that I love to share with you guys and they want to spoil you. So I'll leave the rest of the details for this giveaway down below for you guys. The other thing I have to pop in here is a clip of my puppy bear you guys have been loving little Benji bear here oh my goodness this is his lammy and he goes crazy for this lammy he usually likes to um, wrestle the lammy and all of that good stuff so thank you guys for being here and we love y'all so much for the first Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take these super cute little Dollar Tree burlap leaves and this lace curtain that I had from the thrift store. And I'm just going to gently lay it over the lace leaves. And then with this 2X Rust-Oleum spray paint, probably my favorite spray paint out there, I'm just going to give it a light dusting over the leaves. It really doesn't take a whole lot of spray paint, but I do give it a full coverage um, in one spray. And then once you have that done, you guys can just go ahead and pull that little curtain right off of there or lace panel or whatever you choose to use and it is so magical oh my goodness check this out you guys have to try this so super easy and such a fun way to make a custom um, craft and it really dresses up these inexpensive little Dollar Tree leaves so the Dollar Tree leaves come I believe five to six to a pack and I decided that the little burlap color was so cute I wanted to try this wine color I thought it would be absolutely gorgeous. So again, I just laid the leaves down and then took the lace and kind of did an overlay on top of it. And I knew that the white was really going to pop against this wine color. You just gently pull it straight off after you're finished and voila, check these out. So super duper fabulous and an excellent way again to dress up those leaves. And I'm going to share with you guys this cute little tobacco basket kind of wreath that I'm going to use these leaves in but look at how beautiful this makes it so you can just mix in some really pretty regular Dollar Tree leaves with some of these customized leaves and it's going to give any arrangement that you're working on more of a high-end customized look and it kind of gives it that romantic 
flare as well. So for only a couple of dollars in spray paint, you have a magical new little goodie. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take five rolls of Dollar Tree Deco mesh, some of this burlap fabric, and several rolls of a Dollar Tree ribbon, this little cute sign that I'm going to take apart, and then this tinsel Dollar Tree witch hat and some pipe cleaners. And I'm going to use my scissors to remove the tinsel from the hat. I want to make a scarecrow hat out of this little witch hat wreath. And once you have all of the tinsel removed, here is what it's going to look like. The next step is to tie a pipe cleaner to the top of your witch hat and just secure your piece of burlap fabric or whatever color you really want to make your little scarecrow hat. You could also use deco mesh if you wanted to, but I just took my fabric and wrapped it around and I did wrap it on top of each loop. So you just kind of wrap it and then wrap it and wrap it some more and that way it will cover up the little black part because you don't want that that part to show through. So you could even double your ribbon and that would work as well. Now I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and I pipe cleanered the bottom to hold that piece of fabric in place. No gluing required. And then I'm going to take several pipe cleaners. I probably used about 20 on this project or maybe have 30 on hand just to be safe. If you get a bag at Dollar Tree, they come 45 to a pack. And then I'm going to measure out eight inches for my deco mesh and what I do with my pipe cleaners is I just cut them in half super easy that's going to help them go just a little bit further so I'm taking three rolls of my deco mesh and I'm laying them on top of each other and I'm measuring out to about eight inches and then I'm just going to trim that off and what we're going to do is make deco mesh bundles the next thing I want to share with you guys is I'm going to make nine inch trims on my ribbon so I'm going to take several different ribbons I think I ended up using two rolls of the larger ribbon and then two rolls of the smaller ribbon and then some of the little mesh tubing. Now I'm sharing with you guys some different ribbon ideas. The ones that I used for this wreath specifically were the chevron and the plaid ribbon. I thought that I was going to use different and more but I ended up only using the chevron and the plaid. If you are trying to replicate this wreath exactly how I did it otherwise just choose whatever ribbon you love and you do want to cut them a little bit longer than your deco mesh to help them them kind of stick out and show off if that's how you want it to look. And then I'm just taking some of the smaller ribbon and I cut them in nine inch cuts as well. The next thing I want to do is just roll my little deco mesh up into this cute little curly roll. So if you've ever rolled up a burrito or um, just, you know, kind of roll into a roll, I guess it's super easy, but it's not anything that's earth shattering. You just roll it into a cute little roll and there you have it and take whatever ribbon of choice that you want. Want, lay that on top of your little cute little bundle of rolls and there's going to be three um, of the deco mesh to each bundle and you're just going to put your ribbon on top of it and then take your pipe cleaner and pipe cleaner that together so easy you guys there's no way to mess this up don't fear if your mesh frays, just trim it off. Don't fear if your mesh is kind of wonky. It's going to be totally fine because once it's all kind of squished together, you're really not going to notice. So the hardest thing for me really working with mesh is that it just has a tendency to do whatever it wants. So that's my own little personal probably control issue, honestly. Um, but be patient with it and give it a little roll here. Now I did want to let you guys know that I'm going every other color. So I did yellow and then brown and then yellow and you can do that when you alternate your colors so for this wreath I used three rolls of yellow and two rolls of brown Now I'm adding a little bundle of the smaller ribbons and with the smaller ribbons, I just layer them on top of each other. I chose the sparkly orange and the cute little pumpkin ribbon that they put out at Dollar Tree. You can also find small ribbon like this very similar at the craft stores, usually for about 99 cents or even less if you use a coupon. So again, I'm just making these cute little burrito, taquito, whatever kind of rolls that you want to think about. Um, but just think about just rolling something together. 
Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see mine are very imperfect. And you can also use a chip clip to hold your little rolls together. That can help save your fingers um, if you have problems with your hands. Now I'm adding the chevron ribbon on top and then again, just twist tie in the back. So the best thing to do is to get a bunch of these bundles all ready. And then the last one I wanted to show with you guys how to make was this one with the little mesh tubing. If you ever wonder what to do with that mesh tubing, it's super fun to use in a deco mesh wreath. So I rolled my little bundles together and then you're just gonna take the mesh tubing, lay it on top of the bundle and make a couple little loops, just two loops on either side and then tie that pipe cleaner on. Again, super easy and not hard at all. I just wanna encourage you guys to give it a try. So now I'm gonna start and I'm going to put um, one of the bundles, as you can see right here with my little um, pipe cleaner. You just take it and you pipe cleaner it on to the outward edge of the witch hat wreath. So I do two on the outer edge and then I alternate two on the inner um, edge. And then you go two on the outer edge and two on the inner edge. And I do that all the way down the entire wreath. And you'll see it's sectioned off into sections. Um, for the larger sections, you'll wanna put about four to five bundles. And then um, on the smaller sections, only about two bundles, but you can really kind of play with it and see what you have going on. Sometimes you'll find that you don't need quite as many, and sometimes you'll find you may need to go back in and touch it up with an extra little bundle of mesh. Um, but you'll also wanna kind of squish them together just a little bit so they look all nice and fluffy and full. So you're just gonna to continue to add your bundles um, and you want to make a pattern. So I started with the plaid ribbon and then with the chef Chevron ribbon and then went with the smaller ribbon and then the little mesh tubing and then I just start that pattern over as I work my way down the witch hat wreath comment let me know if you guys have questions this isn't hard I promise it's kind of hard to explain though I guess I'm sure you guys can tell what I'm doing with my fingers but again you just um, tie your little bundles of mesh on to the outward edge of your witch hat wreath and then you tie the next two on to your inward edge um, the little part that's kind of sticking out so there you guys have it and you continue to work your magic as you go you can also fluff your larger ribbons and bundles as you see fit it. And then once you have all of your bundles attached and fluffied up, you continue to give it a good fluffing, which you guys know I love to do. And then next part, we're going to make a beautiful bow. So I'm gonna use my Easy Bow Maker and you can get it on Deco Exchange, on Amazon or any craft store. And you're just gonna take a pipe cleaner and pop it down into the center part. And then you're gonna start out with your ribbon. So I chose Chevron ribbon and I started out making an eight inch bow and then ended up having to remake make it because it was actually too big believe it or not so it ended up needing to be about six to seven inches and when I say six to seven inches I mean on either side of the ribbon so on the easy bow maker it's super easy because it has it all measured out so I'm starting out with chevron ribbon and then I'm going in with this brown plaid ribbon and I'm just continuing to work my way back and forth and when they say it's an easy bow maker let me tell you it's super easy now I'm adding this cute little Dollar Tree um, um, little red truck ribbon. I wanted to use this on a larger project bow because the little red truck seems to get lost when you're making a smaller project bow. It's the only thing about this ribbon I would say that I kind of struggled to use. I wanted to really give it um, a good show and so now I'm using some of that Dollar Tree pretty fall leaf ribbon and this is going to make just a big beautiful bow. Now if you don't have an easy bow maker don't fret. I have a really great bow video I'm gonna link it in the description box of my YouTube video here and you guys can just click on that and you can make a really easy Olivia bow now I took a pipe cleaner and I just pipe cleaned that into the side of my little scarecrow hat wreath and then I'm giving it a nice 
good fluffing and I did end up having to trim my tails a little bit because it looked a little bit crazy with really long tails. So the other thing I want to let you guys know is to make sure you guys um, cut that little cute dovetail triangle at the end of your um, bow tails. The next thing I want to do is pop this little scarecrow into the top and then I'm also going to add some darling sunflowers. I also added that cute little sign up there. That was a little Dollar Tree sign I took apart and then some sparkling leaves and then of course I made a cute little bow for the top and then added a sunflower and here it is in all its glory. Oh my goodness how cute and adorable. Now let me tell you we're thankful in this home especially for our puppy bear. We had a little bit of a scare with him. He had an upset tummy and of course being a new puppy mommy I panicked. Anyway he got checked out by the vet and he's okay so I just had to give you guys an update on bear but check out this super adorable scarecrow wreath. I mean this is going to bring a smile to our face every time we come to our front door and we're out here a lot more now because we have to take the puppy to go potty outside. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that I would share that with you guys. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanna make a super adorable Dollar Tree uh, pumpkin mat. So you just take a Dollar Tree mat, this is just a regular old black mat, and then this little felt pumpkin, I found this at Dollar Tree as well, and then I'm using the Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint. This is a satin spray paint. I suggest satin or flat for this project. And then you are gonna have to give it a really nice, healthy dose. I believed I used about half a can for this. Now, I wasn't super particular on turning it completely white. I did just want to give a cute little pumpkin outline, but check this out. How adorable. And I'm going to go back in with a Sharpie marker and outline the edges of the pumpkin. But how cute does this look layered at my front door to give it that cute little pumpkin look? Bear is helping me decorate my front porch for fall. We set some mums out and he just has to check on everything that's going on. I put some yellow mums on either side of my door and then the little purple mums on either side. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this cute tobacco basket that I got at Dollar General. It was about $10 and then I just hot glued some foam down at the base and then I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree leaves and I just cut them off of their stem and and I'm going to pop some stem leaves in, and then these cute little leaves that we did in an earlier DIY and they're just so easy to play with. So I only ended up using three bundles of leaves for this project um, and then the little burlap leaves. What I love about the tobacco, tobacco basket wreath is if you don't have a lot of money to spend on florals or you don't want to use a lot of florals, this is really the perfect alternative. So a couple of dollars if you can reuse your tabasco, tobacco basket. I shared with you guys one over um, the lemon season. I've shared with you guys some neutral ways to do this one. You just leave a spot in the center to pop a bow in and you are good to go. Just a little tip there for you to save um, money on a budget and then just have something really beautiful to decorate that's kind of an alternative. I did pop some leaves into the base of this and and then a couple over at the top. But again, you do want to leave a big space if you're going to add a bow. You don't have to add a bow. You could always add some pumpkins or a little scarecrow or whatever suits your fancy and floats your boat. And then once you have enough of it filled out, you can begin to um, think about your bow. You can also add in a cute little Dollar Tree mini sign. This autumn blessing sign is the perfect one. So for this DIY, you just add some hot glue to the back of your sign and then a dab of hot glue and then the pipe cleaner and then I just take a tag and layer a tag on top of that or any scrap piece of ribbon and you can tie any Dollar Tree sign directly on to a wreath so easy you guys now I'm going to take my easy bow maker and cheat again and I'm going to make this cute little easy bow you pop a pipe cleaner down into the base of your easy bow maker and then I'm going to go about six inches across on either side I'm starting out with the chevron ribbon I just thought that would be a fun little pop of color by the front door I love this chevron ribbon and I needed to finish up the rest of that roll now I decided to add some fall leaves again I really want some color because I'm going to use this outside my front door and there's those colors 
colorful mums, so I did want this to just be really fun and colorful. Again, I'm going six inches across and I'm dovetailing the ends of my ribbon by cutting a little upward triangle. The next ribbon I decided to use was some of this Dollar Tree Buffalo Check Plaid ribbon. Can we all get an amen and a hallelujah for Dollar Tree finally putting out some Buffalo Check Plaid ribbon? Um, this is kind of a maroon color and I am holding back on using a lot of it quite yet because I do want to use some of it for my Christmas decor, but I couldn't resist because um, I did use those fall leaves that have more of that deep, um, beautiful kind of burgundy color or wine color or it's almost just like a reddish color. I don't know. Comment, let me know what you guys think this color would be. It almost looks brick red wine. That's what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to pop my whole bow off and then just tie it off with a little pipe cleaner. And then I just pop that into the center of my tobacco basket and it floats in there just perfectly. Give it a nice good fluffing. You guys know that's the secret to any bow. Fluff, fluff, fluff. And then when you think you're done, you got to fluff some more. <laughs> and so there you have it. So easy, so fabulous on a budget. It looks like something you would buy at a high-end boutique and we did it for next to nothing. So check it out. Um, on one side of my house, I put the cute little tobacco basket. I've never actually decorated this side with a tobacco basket. In fact, I almost feel like my center part wreath needs to be bigger on my scarecrow, but I'm not going to do a bigger wreath because I am going to do a big garland over the door. So that is going to take center stage. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to show you guys a super adorable little pumpkin. We're going to start out with one of the orange Dollar Tree pumpkins and just spray paint it white. Once I sprayed my pumpkin white, I did let it dry for about two to three hours. And then I'm using this piece of lace. This is the lace I use for all of my spray painting projects. And it's just an expensive thrift store, like polyester lace. So don't anybody cringe. It's not an antique vintage piece, but I am going to lay it on top of my pumpkin. And then I decided to go with this really beautiful um, crimson color. And I'm just going to spray paint that on top of the pumpkin and oh my goodness you guys are going to be in awe when you see the finished project and remember just choose any color that you're decorating with that you love look at this gorgeous beauty how pretty did this come out oh my goodness i am so crushing on this you could always add a pretty bow and some bling but i want to live with it for just a minute before i really go over the top and add too many goodies to that so here is how the entire thing turned out and i'm telling you my little assistant bear today was just such a blessing to me. He is so adorable and he brings me so much joy, especially since my kiddos are off to school now and he definitely keeps me on my toes as well. So comment and let me know as always, what was your favorite DIY in this video? I love to hear which DIYs you guys love to see me do. Um, it kind of helps me plan for some of the next ones and which colors are you all decorating for spring? Now I do have a giveaway going on right now. It's a $50 gift card to burlapfabric.com. So don't forget to comment down below. Now the secret question is, what is your favorite Halloween candy treat? If so, let me know. I have to know what you guys love as a little sweet treat splurge. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, you're going to need three ceramic pumpkins and some fall foliage. Now I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree fall foliage and just begin to glue it around the top part of my first pumpkin. So this is going to be the base of the pumpkin. Now these are the little ceramic pumpkins that Dollar Tree has out right now. So you guys should be able to find them in your store. And I'm going to continue to glue different kind of colors of foliage um, layered around each other. And that's going to give my pumpkin something to adhere to. What we're going to do is make a Dollar Tree pumpkin topiary. So you see pumpkin topiaries all over and they're so beautiful, but they're really pricey. The great thing about the Dollar Tree pumpkins is there's always a little hole in the bottom, which makes them perfect for creating a topiary. I don't know that I've ever done one of these and I don't know why it's taken me so long. So I'm going to continue to glue just pretty 
um, wheatgrass and some little berries and I even added in some of these little tiny white flowers. So here's how it looks once you get your first layer done and then you just add a big dollop of hot glue and add that second layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in some more berries and more fall goodies. Now for the next step of the pumpkin topiary, we're gonna glue more leaves onto the top part of the pumpkin and then add a big old dollop of hot glue and add your last little pumpkin. And I did use one that was a little bit smaller than the bottom too, but really you all could use any Dollar Tree pumpkins to make a very similar topiary. And they have so many cute ones out right now with so many different adorable designs. Always check the bottom and make sure there's a little hole. And that way your um, pumpkin will stack so easily onto your topiary and then I did decide to add a little bit more foliage and flowers and berries in and around the base of that second pumpkin and then of course I had to go a little bit extra and even add some to the top the other thing I decided to do was go ahead and take some of this beautiful Mackenzie Childs inspired ribbon and just tuck some pretty ribbon in and around that second layer of the pumpkin so this step is definitely optional but I've seen these beautiful topiaries on the Mackenzie Child's website and on Pinterest and they're so pretty and again you guys could definitely customize this to suit your decor so maybe y'all are doing purples or blues just add whatever beautiful ribbons and flowers that you might have now these are Dollar Tree mini pumpkins so try to think about picking up little flowers that are more of the mini size or you can always trim them down like I did with those leaves so continue to add pretty bits and bobs just to fill out your beautiful pumpkin. So once I had it all my pretty bits and bobs, you can pop your pumpkin on top of a little planter or even one of those little boxes. We had painted that in another video, but I just popped it in to my tablescape here. It is so beautiful and so festive and a great way to decorate your table and do it on a teeny tiny budget. I am absolutely in love with this. So fun and fabulous and really fairly easy to do. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take another one of the Dollar Tree ceramic pumpkins, and this one already comes in white, but you could always paint one white. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie and just draw lines down my pumpkin. So what I want to do with this pumpkin is create a Mackenzie Childs inspired mini pumpkin. I'm then going to draw lines around my pumpkin to create this square. So I ended up for this little ceramic pumpkin, I drew four slots down. So I hope that makes sense to where there's a little checkerboard here. Now, I have had some of you all tell me that you're doing your checkerboard pattern with a Sharpie marker, which you could totally do. I wanted to try it to see if it works, and it actually does. You may wanna have a couple of markers on hand because the tip might get kind of dull. Um, I usually paint mine, which can be a little bit more tedious as well. So I did go ahead and color in a couple of them just to show you guys that this is something that's attainable and easy to do. You could also look for a Sharpie that has a wider tip that might work as well. And they do make paint markers. So those are some tips. Now I decided to switch to a paintbrush and I'm using a smaller tip 
paintbrush. That way I have a little bit more control over painting my little checkerboard shape here. So I'm just gonna continue to go in with my checkerboard um, paint and I am using a glass acrylic paint that you can get at Michaels. However, you don't have to use a glass paint. My Michaels was actually low on paints and so this was one of the options and I thought I would try it and it actually works pretty well. You do have to give it time in between coats to dry. So just some little tips there. I want to encourage you guys to try this. It's not as hard as you think and it's only a $1 pumpkin. So if you mess up, you could always paint over it or just give yourself a little grace and have some fun and go for it. And here's how my pumpkin looked. I did use two coats of paint and I also used a gold paint marker to outline my little checkerboard squares. They sell the paint markers at Dollar Tree and I found one at Michael's that I like that has a little bit wider tip than the Dollar Tree one. But here it is on top of this beautiful topiary and we are actually going to create this topiary on a teeny tiny budget. I am so excited to share this with you guys. So I found this topiary on the McKinsey Child's website for $750. It was discounted to $350, but I knew we could create it using Dollar Tree and budget-friendly supplies. So I'm starting out with this Waverly White chalk paint and one of these Dollar Tree planters. But if you guys can't find this Dollar Tree planter, that's okay. You can always go to Walmart and find a plastic planter. And it doesn't have to be square. It can really be any size. In fact, I would have probably preferred for mine to be round, but I'm trying to use what I already have in my craft stash. So I'm taking my chalk paint and I'm chalk painting a nice generous layer of chalk paint on the entire planter. And then I'm going to let that dry for about an hour and a half half and then go back in and chalk paint it again. I think I used three coats just to make sure it was really coated really well. Now I'm taking some painter's tape and I'm going to create stripes with my painter's tape and my sharpie marker. I want to do stripes on this planter um, to kind of create that really cool Mackenzie Childs look. You could also go back in and do a checkerboard pattern which I will probably do on another topiary design but for this one I decided stripes was the way that I wanted to go. So once I had my stripes uh, marked out, I'm going to go in with a wider paintbrush and just paint my stripes down the front of the planter. So again, give yourself some grace. This really doesn't have to be perfect. If you study the Mackenzie Child's designs, they're not perfect. And really any hand painted um, object or item that you see like in a high end designer boutique is going to have some flaws in it. So I think that's what I really love just to keep in mind when I'm painting is that it doesn't have to be perfect it really could the imperfections can be really beautiful and make it look more handmade rather than manufactured so that's just a little tip for you guys on that but continue to paint your stripes take a deep breath and have fun with it And here's how it looked when I was finished painting my stripes. I did paint another layer of paint over that. Now I'm using my Arteza Gold Paint. This is a really pretty metallic gold. You could also use a metallic craft paint really from any from any craft store or Walmart. This is just an acrylic Arteza paint, which is just a really nicer um, acrylic paint, but again, any will do. And I did use about two layers of that. And so here's how that planter looks once it's done being painted but there's more steps and more layers and I'm promising you guys I'm going to share with you how to build this entire topiary I have been drooling over the Mackenzie Childs one for months now and I honestly wasn't sure, sure that we could do it on a budget but here we go now we're going to take this little candlestick I found it at the thrift store for two dollars Dollar Tree also carries a candlestick about this size 
I can't find them in my stores. I know a lot of people do find them, but you can also check Walmart or your Dollar General. So I chalk painted it white with two layers and now I'm going in and I'm hand painting a checkerboard pattern. I will tell you that this was very tedious. This is a little bit more of an advanced um, project. I had a hard time with it. So if you're nervous about it, you could always just leave this um, solid one color, or you could just paint stripes, or you could go for it and do a checkerboard and redo it about three times like I did. <laughs> I admit it was really tough for me. I don't know why the candlestick is tough, but I will get better as I go along. So here was my final attempt and what I'll share with you guys. I did just decide not to trace out lines and just do a checkerboard pattern freestyle by hand, which actually ended up being easier for me for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Um, but I went ahead and painted my checkerboard pattern. I used two coats of the black paint and then I went in with my gold paint marker and I just outlined the um, checkerboard pattern. But this is at the base of the planter, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And then here's what it looks like when I finally got done. Now I'm gonna use my E6000 glue, which you can get at Walmart or the craft store, and it is gonna be a heavy duty bonding glue. It does have a bit of an odor, um, but it is going to help this planter stay on my candlestick. And then I'm gonna use my hot glue for that temporary hold so I can work with this project without it breaking loose. And so I'm just gonna run a little bit of hot glue around where, kind of in and around where the E6000 glue was and voila, there we have that. Now it is attached and ready to roll. Now this is another part that I'm gonna share with you guys, super fun. Okay, so Dollar Tree is going to be putting out carvable pumpkins. You're gonna to wanna to grab a couple of these because they're amazing for DIYs. They don't quite have them out in stores yet, but if you're a pumpkin crazy girl like me and you have some left over from last year, or if you have really any pumpkin that's going to work for a topiary, go ahead and chalk paint one or two of those Why I ended up only using one and you do want to chalk paint it probably about two to three coats to get a really good layer but these are awesome for a topiary and I'll show you guys why in just a sec but that Waverly white chalk paint thank you my follower Janice girl you just rocked my world when you sent this to me in the mail I was so thankful so a huge shout out to Janice for sending me some chalk paint we're going to be chalk painting a lot of stuff because she sent me an extra large container of it. I've been out for weeks, so it's a big deal. <laughs> anyway, I decided to go ahead and make this one the striped pumpkin. So I'm going to do three pumpkins in my topiary, and this one's going to be the striped one. Again, I'm just using a Sharpie marker to trace out my lines, and then I'm going to go back in and paint the stripes, similar to how we did the planter. You're just going to trace it out and then paint it. I am going in with acrylic black paint and I'm just going to pull the stripes down as I go. This was relatively easy, although the foam carvable pumpkins that Dollar Tree puts out, they're a little bit bumpy. So I will tell you that it did take a good heavy layer of at least two coats of that acrylic paint to get the good coverage that I desired. Now I'm gonna make my checkerboard pumpkin, and this pumpkin is a little bit larger than the Dollar Tree carvable pumpkin, and to be honest with you, it came from Michael's. I used my half off coupon and got it for about 10 to $11. So I did go ahead and draw the stripes down the pumpkin, and now I'm gonna draw rings around the pumpkin to create my checkerboard pattern. This is similar to that smaller pumpkin that we created, except for it's just gonna be on a larger scale. Now because you're not gonna see the bottom of the pumpkin, I didn't worry about doing detail checks. If you guys can see up underneath there, there's not any detail checks underneath the pumpkin. I just didn't think that was necessary and it would have made a whole extra step. Um, and also I do notice that some people when they're painting these checks, they mark an X so they don't skip the pattern. That might be a little helpful tip. It seems like the longer I practice painting these, the better that I've gotten and I don't skip the pattern nearly as often. But you can always go back in with some white paint if that does if that does happen to you. Also, I didn't show it in this um, 
painting, but I use a little bit of gold paint to drag through the paint on my second layer of painting. To be honest with you, after standing and painting this many pumpkins, I did have to sit down for just a little bit in my living room, pop on a show, and do more of the detail work there. But it's super easy. All you guys do is take your paintbrush and drag it in a little bit of gold or white paint to give it some accent, or you can just leave it as is and that's super fun. If you're not patient to paint these, I have seen some checkerboard and harlequin pattern pumpkins at the at-home store and some of the different craft stores. So check those stores. All you have to do is remove the stem and you could easily make a topiary, again, if you don't have the patience. The other idea for you, if you didn't want to hand paint a pumpkin in this style, is you could use a napkin, a Mackenzie Child's napkin, and decoupage the napkin onto the pumpkin, which I am going to share a DIY with you all on that because I want to give everybody so many different options. And the other thing is, is I'm going to share with you guys a lot of different fall decor styles. Like in the last video I shared with you guys, I shared with you all neutrals. So this is more of a bold black and white style. The last one was neutrals. I'm going to be doing some pinks and blues, just all different kinds of colors and styles. So definitely stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun. Now, I'm gonna take one of those Dollar Tree gift boxes, and this was actually from my sweet friend, Wendy. She sent this to me, and I just popped a hole in that gift box. It's the bottom of it flipped over, and then I popped a hole in that pumpkin, and then I'm using a floral stem, and I'm just going to push the floral stem into the bottom of the box and into the bottom of the pumpkin, and I'm gonna pop that pumpkin back into the planter, and voila, we have something to keep our pumpkin held down into without using a bunch of icky glue. I don't think that that would be the best idea. You guys should try it and let me know how it goes. Now I'm using another floral stem and when I say floral stem it's just the stem of a floral and I'm popping the carvable pumpkin in and then I did hot glue the tiny pumpkin at the top. Now is the fun part that I absolutely love and I'm taking some Dollar Tree leaves and this little Dollar Tree pumpkin pick is gorgeous. You guys keep your eye out for it in your fall um, Dollar Tree. It's in the fall floral section. It's so pretty. I think it's going to sell out. It's just so gorgeous. And the pumpkins are like this pretty copper color, but I'm just using Dollar Tree florals. I'm popping them into the base. There's no styrofoam here, but the leaves really kind of hold these in really tightly. This is going to go as a table centerpiece or next to my mantle. So I'm not really worried about the florals falling out, but if you were worried about that, you may want to invest in some floral foam um, instead of the Dollar Tree uh, gift box that I used for the base of this. I am again trying to use everything I have on hand and just have fun with it and use what I have in my stash. I have a lot of crafting supplies. I'm also using some of these pretty glittering fall picks because I do have gold in this project. So here it is. Oh my goodness. I think I'm sorry, I think it's just as good as the $750 version. Okay, maybe it's not as perfect, maybe it's not as high end, but I'm really proud of this. I made it handmade. I think you guys can do this too on a budget. I really didn't know if we could pull this one off, but we're gonna make more of these in different colors and styles, and I hope you guys try this and know that we can do this on a budget for much less than the hundreds of dollars, and I do have mad respect for the Mackenzie Childs painters and designers, completely, 100%. My budget just doesn't allow it, so I have to dupe these things, I have to share them with you guys. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of these super adorable Dollar Tree owls. Now, I think that they are adorable in their original form. So if you love the ceramic hand-painted look of the owls in their original form, definitely go for it. But there is a bit of a modern farmhouse flair to these DIYs. So I thought going in and painting it just completely black would be really cool. I did one that I painted chalk painted white in my last DIY video. So if you guys like that shabby chic, more neutral farmhouse look, definitely go for that. Um, but here it is. And I did 
did even go in and add a little bit of um, gold paint to kind of give it some accent. The other thing I think I'm going to do with these is I'm going to paint a checkerboard design on the sides of them. I have seen Mackenzie Child's owls that have like the checkerboard design on the side. I thought that would be really cool. And then here's the little white owl that I painted. I thought that they would just be such a cute little pair, little buddies on the tablescape. And here it is all mixed in together. And I am telling you guys, I honestly think that this topiary is probably the most wonderful, probably one of my favorite DIYs I've ever done. And we did it on such a tiny budget. So comment, let me know what was your favorite um, DIY in this video and which one will you all be recreating? I love to hear what you're inspired to do. And I know so many of you all have been loving the Mackenzie Childs. In the last video, I also shared with you guys a Mackenzie Childs um, pattern in brown and white. So in case maybe you don't care for the strongness of the black and white, I totally get that. You could do brown and white. I've also had a lot of you all in my group sharing blue and white check and pink and white check, which I think is adorable. I need to try some of those as well. Um, but here it is all mixed in to this fabulous tablescape. You guys, I am so honestly crushing on this. I don't ever want to say that one of my DIYs is a favorite, but I really think that this one is by far one of my most favorite, definitely for this season. This topiary is just so crazy. So here was the first episode in our fall um, episode and here's the second episode we did with the neutrals and then here's the third episode so this is my I love fall series I'll link the whole playlist down below and some from last year for you guys to binge watch <laughs> for the first Dollar Tree DIY we're gonna make a super adorable family blessing sign so I'm gonna take this bless the family beside us and the love between us sign as well as these two buffalo check plaid bridal signs these are actually in the picture frame section at Dollar Tree Tree. and I'm going to remove the backing off the two smaller signs. So I want the smaller signs to have kind of a 3D effect popping out from the buffalo check plaid signs and I just used my pen to kind of mark them out that way I know exactly where I want to hot glue. So I'm just going to hot glue a little dibbity dabbity of hot glue onto the back of my signs and then gently place them on here. So we're actually going to cover up the second sign with one of those cute little Dollar Tree picture frames. These are so adorable, rustic, and fabulous. I did want to remove the backing. That way it sits flush against it. So again, I'm just adding some hot glue and then I'm going to pop it on here. So this is something that you would see in a Kirkland's or a high-end decor store and we are making it on such a budget. Now I decided to go ahead and add a bow to this just to kind of give it this blooming effect. I wanted to put it in my entryway table or next to my faux mantle in my living room. So I'm just taking some Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm gluing the ribbons from end to end. This is a great little way to make this kind of a stacked layered bow and you just make one each about an inch shorter. That way they can all show. You're going to give it a nice good fluffing. Tie it off with your pipe cleaner and then you can pop it on to your adorable family blessings sign. Now of course I had to go a little bit extra and pop in some of this greenery. So I just used some stray greenery that I had laying around in my craft stash and then I did go for a bit of an autumn feel with popping in some of these leaves and some of these little Dollar Tree branches but get creative and use what you guys have on hand this doesn't have to cost a lot with just a couple of picture frames some bows and some creativity you guys the sky is the limit now if you don't have the little um, clip uh, picture frame you guys could always just make your own with a clothes pin and a cute little frame so kind of think outside the box and just go for it I'm popping this adorable little fall picture here and here it is kind of popped in it to my mantle setting it's so fun and fabulous and on a teeny tiny budget you guys cannot go wrong with this project so thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafting and decorating adventure it's a true blessing and honor to have you all here if you all are new welcome I'm Olivia Olivia's romantic home I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget I truly believe that you do not have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. And for everybody that comes back and loves on me, thank you all so, so much. Listen, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribing is totally free. I love hosting um, giveaways for you guys and I share 
are several DIY videos a week with you guys over on YouTube as well as several a day over on Facebook. Crafting and decorating is uh, definitely my passion. So thank you guys for being here. If you guys need more crafting and decorating inspiration, I have my channel um, listed into different playlists. You guys can binge on fall decorating, Christmas decorating, organizing, pretty much any holiday decorating or decorating in general I love to do. So thank you guys again for being here. Remember you're on a social media platform. Leave those kind comments below because I read them. The people that are watching this read them and we need more positivity out there. This is a community of goodness and joy. And if you guys need prayer, drop those prayer requests down below. So I love y'all to the moon and back. I can't wait for our next video. And until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. Talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.